Hey there! In this video I have a few shop updates for you that were kind of not really interesting enough to make a separate video out of it. Then upgrading my 3D printer with a Raspberry Pi and use Octoprint on it and a bigger project announcement. So let's get started. First update being at the CNC router. This is the computer that I was using the whole time to control it. It's a Microsoft Surface-like tablet computer. This particular model is the Trackstar Prime Tab. I don't know if that's available everywhere in the world, but I got it about a year ago for a different reason, for about 400 euros. And it gets the job done, but since I'm making videos, I sometimes have to record the screen while using it. And to get a acceptable quality when doing that with a decent bitrate and frame rate, it just couldn't handle that smoothly. And for future projects, when I record the screen, I just don't want to wait anymore for the computer to do its thing. So what I did to solve that is to set up my old editing PC as now the shop computer and uh, it's like day and night. And I also set it up to boot when I turn on the power. So it should come to life now and it does. Now oh, the screen also comes up automatically and here I could turn on the CNC router. Well, and that's just a nice little workflow addition. And since this is my old editing PC, it's really like day and night. This PC would still be capable of editing my videos. It's now about three or four years old and still the components for most people and especially for controlling a CNC router are totally overkill. It has like an eight core CPU, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, a GeForce 960 graphics card and one of the earliest M.2 SSDs. It's so fast in comparison to this one and I'm really happy with that now. Perfect workshop computer. So also running for example like Fusion 360 or Aspire to make toolpaths for the router or just draw something, perfect. Only downside or a problem to solve was that it doesn't have Wi-Fi built in. But to solve that I use one of these power line adapters, I think you call them. And uh, another unit of these is upstairs at the router. And well, this just sends like the signals through the electrical wiring of the house. And this thing turns it back into data signals and is connected to the computer. Really roughly how this works. And at the same time, this also works as a Wi-Fi extender and makes for much better Wi-Fi in the basement and the whole workshop. The other downside is, um, hmm, uh, can, you, can you see it? Yeah, it's a bit of a cable mess now. Um, I haven't spend too much time tidying that up. But I had another idea. Besides the cable mess, dust will also accumulate here and to protect all that a little bit from that, I threw together this cover that hooks onto the machine with a few magnets and protects all of that a little bit, except for the core of the two length sensor. I just need access to that so that stays on top, but the rest is kind of covered underneath this. The magnets I used here are these screw-in type magnets. I also made a little hole for them to sit in. And this is how they look normally. They are a little countersunk with a hole in it to put a screw into. Their holding power isn't really that high and they also break really easily if you let them snap together like, like so. I won't do it now. But yeah, for a purpose like this, they work just fine. And with the cables tied together and some paint and finish, this looks pretty decent. Another addition from a different video was to add this strip of wood here, which adds support for the stair ramps when I'm using my hold downs in the threaded insert holes right here. And I stuck that down with double sided tape, but unfortunately it didn't quite hold, I already removed it. And the reason why the tape failed, I guess, is because of a factor that very often gets forgotten, which is temperature. This aluminum table is pretty cold, much colder than the air temperature. And since this surface contacted this, it got much colder on the underside than on the top side. And wood that gets cold wants to shrink. 
and the top surface didn't want to shrink. And the only thing that wood does then is it starts to bend. And that's exactly what happened because the tape started to fail in the middle. The sides were still stuck down, but the middle started to lift up. So yeah, lesson learned, just screw it down. Since I still have one slot available right at the edge here, I made this strip of wood and pre-drilled holes for screws. In the slot fits a strip of hardwood with pre-drilled screw holes that acts as a really long T-nut. And I'm just using wood screws with the tip ground off. Another addition I made was embedding magnets on the side here and a matching piece on this side, which now just snaps onto here. The same for the back. And there's also one in the back, but this is screwed on. And I made this because I was experiencing kind of a lot of dust coming off of the side and onto the floor. And I hope that this just keeps a little bit more dust on the table and less on the floor and everywhere else. And the one in the back is basically for the same purpose, but it also kind of protects the computer setup a little bit. And of course I made them removable because sometimes when I film at a low angle, I can't see anything anymore, but then I can just remove it. And the one in the back of course needs to be removable because when I work on something long that extends the machine limits, it needs to be out of the way. The one in the front is low enough for that. The next one is one of these, why didn't I make this two years ago type of projects. Which is adding a Raspberry Pi to my 3D printer to run Octoprint on it. Octoprint is a service or a software that runs on the Raspberry Pi and with a web interface you can then remote control the printer, start and stop prints and if you have a webcam installed also watch the progress and also record these sexy time lapses that you see everywhere. The biggest benefit for me is that I don't always have to walk to the printer anymore to see the progress or start a program and also being able to record the timeless videos since I'm making videos is a nice addition. So I bought a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, a Raspberry Pi camera module, a DC to DC step down converter because I'll be hooking this up to the 24 volt power supply of the printer then step it down to 5 volts to power the computer. Then a 5 volt Noctua fan to cool it. And I also already printed all the necessary parts. This will be the camera arm for later. This is the housing for the computer. And now I can just show you the assembly. First the computer goes into the housing. And the housing I actually got from Thingiverse. But I modified it a bit in Google SketchUp to get rid of some of the parts I wouldn't need. I didn't really have normal tiny screws, but I have these M3 screws, so I just tapped the holes in the plastic and that works not. First of all, let's drill into it because I didn't really have tiny enough normal screws, only these M3 ones. So I just tapped the holes in the plastic case and yeah, the holes in the pie are a little bit too small and need to be enlarged to fit a three millimeter. Let's hope that didn't kill it. The fan goes into the lid and I have to say Noctua came up with a pretty sweet mounting method for low vibrations. You have just these rubber pieces here and pull them in and that's it. No tools. And then you just cut off the excess. It can be directly plugged into the GPIO pins here. Next, the power. I'm sure it's impossible to see, but down here are the terminals that supply the motherboard of the printer with power. And we're just going to put some more wires into there and route them to the step down module. Not the best and not the worst sword I ever made. Temporarily mounted on the frame, I can get the right wire length and I think here. Let's hope that's enough. 
Here you can see my red and brown wire that I clamped to the black and red wire from the supply. Now I can switch the printer on and see what voltage I get. 21.3 at the moment. And now I can turn on here and adjust the voltage until I'm at 5 volts. With 5 volts set, I can now connect the wires to the GPIO pins that are for power supply. And the Pi turned on, which you can see by looking at this light. Since I already had Octoprint set up before I started recording, I can now just control the printer with the app. And there goes my control. Come back. With that working, next comes the camera that I want to mount on this carriage, but right about here in the front. To do that, I designed and printed this arm that will screw onto one of the holes of the motor. And only one screw will be enough to really mount it securely because before that I found this piece here on Thingiverse which is for zip tying the cable of the motor to and this has kind of these two things that hook into the back of the motor and with these hooked in it really kind of hugs the motor and snaps in place and then with one screw secured that will really be secured and because I liked that quite a lot, I worked exactly the same into my design just by measuring it and then redrawing that on the computer and then making all of this. And I actually haven't tested this before, so let's give it a shot. Yep, that's it, no screw, it's already in place. And I'm very confident that even without the screw, this could support the really lightweight camera. It can also support this here, which is heavier. Maybe you find this. Now look at this idiot who tries to mount this with a screw that's too short. And the time it takes him to figure that out. The screw is of course one that came as spare parts with the printer. The camera housing has a slot for the cable and can be screwed in place. The lid is just a press fit, but it seems like I misaligned that hole there, so I have to reprint that. Doesn't matter, leave it off for now. Then there's this piece which houses a nylon lock nut right here and down there. And that allows that you only need one tool when you mount it on the camera and the extension arm. I also added pieces for cable management. But I think I might want to move that to the bottom. Don't know yet. And then this cable comes up here and... Oh no, it's too short! Uh, I really thought it would be long enough. Uh, okay. Well, let's quickly demonstrate this in another way. I don't pull it through the cable management and directly through here. I made this opening a little bit bigger and now this cable can fit through here. And that's at the right position to just be plugged into its position. Okay, now let's just ignore that and continue. I first have to order a longer cable. But with that plugged in, I can close the lid and then it theoretically is done. Uh, 
And because I hate myself, I am using slotted screws. Why not? I guess for the time being, this works like this, but now let's try the camera. Now I'm connected and should get a preview from the camera. And there it is. It still lags a little bit because the connection down here is still not the best, but it works. Upstairs with better connection but worse lighting, the preview is pretty smooth. As you can see, it's working pretty good. And then my first try on making such a time lapse. Looks pretty garbage. So then with better lighting, better background, better camera settings and a higher resolution, the result looks pretty decent, I think. Now it's also a few days later and the parts I printed and already assembled are actually another camera arm because I decided on a more modular system and also something with the mounting didn't quite work yet so that has been redone. So time to change that out. And I also got some longer cables for the camera. I want to do this again. Somehow satisfying. Why again did I use slotted screws? Oh yeah, because I hate myself. That snapped in place really good this time. And again, single screw in the front. I can also change the height of the camera just by printing a taller one of these pieces. But for now I'm going with this length. For cable management, instead of integrating them like on this one, I now just have these very easy to print clips that just hook onto the arms and that's it. These clips create a channel that's just big enough to fit this thin flat cable through. Looks pretty good and even better, now it's long enough. This should now give me plenty of options to position the camera exactly where I want and I could also extend this because these links are all the same except for the first and last one. I just have to make sure not to put it in the front of the print bed, although yeah, I don't think I will ever print something right in front here that would interfere with the camera, but I'm pretty sure this works really well. So I will put this version on Thingiverse, not the first one. So it's all finished and this is the setup now. The way I achieve better lighting and background you can also see here I just put the printer into this hmm, yeah, thrown together box that has 3mm thick HDF walls with kind of a white coating that reflects the light pretty good. And here just a studio lamp and that illuminates the printer pretty good. And as you can see, it's also printing and taking a time lapse. That was just a picture. And yeah, that works for now. And also, it's pretty difficult to see, but back there is the Raspberry Pi. And uh, the Wi Fi signal up here is also not the best. And this white cable right here is an Ethernet cable, because, yeah, I now wired it up to Ethernet. And the way I set this up is pretty interesting. Let me show you. As I mentioned before, to hook up the shop computer to the internet and my network, I use a power line adapter like this. And before I bought this one that has the Wi Fi extender built in, I had a simpler one that just connected to Ethernet cables. But these two manufacturers, this one is Netgear, this TP Link, doesn't really matter. 
but they don't communicate with each other. So I can't just plug this in and it automatically connects with all the other ones. But hmm, the easy thinking me said, well, I have two ethernet outlets on this one. So why not just wire this back into this? This sends it back through the <laughs> wiring of the house. And then I use the second one of them upstairs at the printer and connect the printer to that. And this actually works. Probably one of the sketchiest setups for ethernet that I've seen, but 10 times better than when the printer was connected via Wi-Fi. And this now gives me a fluent video response from the printer, which is everything I wanted. Everything else works the way it's intended. <laughs> so yeah, why not? I could also just get another one of these because I can just plug another one into the wall and they, these same units will communicate with each other. And then I wouldn't have to do that, but hey, these things still work and I have them laying around, not being used, so. And up here at the printer, here's the second one of these, actually also connect to an extension cord, which is even worse. But at least I cable managed the ethernet cable inside the printer to be kind of out of the way. Okay, and that's it for the printer upgrade. So from now on, when I include 3D prints in my future projects, I can show you these cool little time lapses instead of the regular time lapses where the printer is just wildly moving around. Or I just take off the finished part and that's it. So yeah. What I also get asked from time to time is what 3D printer I have and how do I like it and all the usual stuff. So I have a Prusa Mark III S that I bought as a Mark III about two and a half years ago and upgraded to the S version about half a year ago. The upgrade is basically just a redesigned extruder that you print yourself and assemble again, a better, more reliable filament sensor because the old one couldn't really detect a transparent filament and a better mounting for the cooling fan. And I guess that's it for the upgrade. It also only costs 20 euros. And how do I like the printer? I like it quite a lot. And I would buy the exact same one again as a kit because yeah, when I assemble it, I can assemble it to my standards and be as accurate as I want. And the print quality it produces is perfect for me. It's successful about 95% mm, of the time. And when it's not successful, it's mostly my fault because I don't watch the first layer being adhered to the bed anymore. I just hit start and go away. And that usually just works. And I also pretty much always use the standard profiles that Prusa offers you with the printer just sometimes some minor modifications, but I usually just use the settings they provide, hit start, and it works, as I said, 95% of the time. This first version of my camera arm extension was such an example. It's not a really easy part to print with lots of overhangs, but you just put in the standard settings, hit start, walked away, and perfect result. Also, just recently I made a few upgrades or modifications because I changed out the bearings that came with the printer with Ego's Dryland bushings. Because uh, the original bearings started to create some deep grooves into the shafts and were more grinding than rolling on them. Maybe that was because I didn't lubricate them enough or hmm, not at all. Don't tell anybody. Yeah, but now I have the dryland bushings that don't require any lubrication because they lubricate themselves. And the print results are the same as before. I'm quite happy with them. And the nice change now is that the printer is quite a bit quieter. I also posted about that on Instagram. So if you don't follow me there already, go ahead because I post something like that and also in between project updates. Another upgrade or modification I did to the print bed while setting up Octoprint. So the print bed usually is mounted with a few standoffs on its support piece down below and it should be perfectly level to the print axis. And you cannot adjust it normally, but the printer has a height sensor right here. And every time it prints, it measures itself out and anything that's not leveled it can compensate with software. But my print bed actually was of 
half a millimeter from lowest to highest point. And 0.5 millimeters is about three layers of print. That is too much. But with Octoprint there are a few plugins where you can measure that and then the modification you do is you instead of stand off at nuts and tighten that together just tight enough so that you can still rotate the screw but there is pretty much no play and then by turning the screw you can find adjust the height on all eight positions except for the middle one there still is the standoff. I also put a link to the guide that I followed in the video description and there's also a plugin for Octoprint that tells you exactly how much you need to rotate each screw so it's level and by doing that it's a little bit iterative so you adjust once, measure again, then adjust again until you're happy enough. I got it to a height difference from lowest to highest of about five one hundredths of a millimeter which is ten times better than before. And that also shows in the print behavior because before I always was experiencing that it was printing better on this side of the print bed and on here it pretty often failed and yeah it turned out that on this side it was much higher than on this side. Now it's the same everywhere and I get the same results everywhere on the print bed. I can only recommend this upgrade, took me about half an hour to do that. It still isn't a cheap printer, I paid 750 euros for the kit, but I can definitely recommend it. Okay and lastly the bigger project announcement, because I want to build a much much better dust shoe for my CNC router, one that moves independent of the z-axis or the spindle over the whole range, one that can make use of the full diameter of the hose because this wasn't really built for that size, more for a shop vac size and also it has integrated compressed air cooling or rather chip clearing. So also during the last 3-4 weeks I started designing it and sourcing materials and components, most of them I've already got for example some linear rails, threaded rod with a nut, uh, here's a stepper motor inside, stuff for compressed air like hoses, fittings, a solenoid valve because the compressed air of course will also be software controlled, um, then bearings, couplings, cable, uh, what is this, power supply for the solenoid valve and yeah all the good stuff. I think I already spent a good 200 euros on all the components made possible by your Patreon support money. So yeah that will be quite a project and I also want to try something a little different with the video, make it somewhat scripted so I'll see how that goes. But no promises when exactly this project will happen but it is one of these perfect projects for letting the engineer in me free. So have a good day and I see you in the next one. That just hooks onto the machine with a few magnets. Yeah, great. Since I already had everything set up before I started recording, I can now just control the printer with the app. Moving up, moving back, and there goes my control.